<laughs> exactly. Well, look, let's let's now talk about Zeppelin. I have, I think, five exclamation points after it on my list. All right, yeah. But How the West Was Won, let's just, because the story of that coming together is kind of insane. It was one of the most surreal days of my life. It was, uh, I was doing Foles with Flood. We were recording Total Life Forever. And uh, Zeppelin, they had different managers. And at that time, Peter Mensch, who managed Foles, was managing Jimmy Page. And Peter Mensch said, oh, they've got this live concert, which had been seven years before or something. And he said, we can't get it mixed because it's been mixed and Jimmy's not happy. I think it had been mixed by somebody else, maybe. Well, I think it was it was mixed by, by Mick and Roy, who had done the live sound, and they had just done, like, they'd cleaned things up. But I don't I think, think they, they meant they, it to be a record mix. It was like, right, it's presentable. Okay. Well, because they, been, there was no plan to put it out, but it had been filmed with 16 cameras. So, like, you know, somebody's going to put that together. Well, he, he wasn't happy about something. And I think, I don't know if he thought it was a mix or it wasn't, but I think obviously the guitars weren't loud enough, I think. <laughs> and, uh, so they said, Peter Main said, would, would you be up for it? And I said, you fucking kidding? <laughs> you know, it's the reason I'm in this job. And as a teenager, I had a poster of Jimmy Page with his 12 neck, neck uh, twin neck that I used to worship, you know, and play my guitar to, hoping that it could be anywhere <laughs> near. He's, you know... So he was a god to me. And uh, so one day the phone rang and it was, hello, Alan, Jimmy Page here. <laughs> it's not every day you get those phone calls. No, no, especially uh, when you think it's Dave Grohl putting on an accent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So he liked me apparently because he'd never heard of me. So he thought that I obviously didn't blow my own trumpet too much. So. I got in because he hadn't heard of me. And I knew Robert. I'd met Robert because my wife actually sang backing vocals on one of his solo albums. All right. she was like 15 or something. And of course, I knew John from Cookie Vultures. So I got asked to do this and the multi-tracks came in and the two guys, had done a, they'd done all the hard work. They'd notched all the frequencies, feedback frequencies out of the crowd, like automated it all. They'd done loads of great work on it. They'd done all the vocal processing effects that I got heard. Robert likes the vocal effects. So I was kind of stick to those. Add, you know, add a bit of your own, but. Yeah, uh, first track was started at the beginning. First track was Good Times, Bad Times. and. Jimmy said, I'll come. I got a phone call for Jimmy. I'll come down about four o'clock. I thought, okay. <laughs> That's not very much time. I probably won't be that far on. Okay, I'll come down anyway. So he came down and he listened to where I was at. And as I was going out, I was thinking, this sounds shit. And he sat there and could tell he was like, hmm, hmm. I said, well, I'm not really that far into it, Jimmy. You know, maybe you should come back tomorrow. So I got him to come back the next day. And I worked really late on it, got it, and he listened to that. Go, whoa, that's different. That's more like it. And we went from there. And uh, it, it was it was amazing. As I got to spend that summer hanging out with Jimmy Page in the studio every day. He used to come down. He used to love coming down. And uh, he'd stand. He would have it on the screen there. And he'd be listening to the music and he'd be stood here doing his Jimmy Page moves, kind of air guitar. And it was, for a Zep fan, it was incredible. Every time he left, I used to have to have at least half an hour recovery period where I could only, all I could do is drink tea and recover because his presence is so immense. Right. And at the end of it, the three of them came in I did think while I was mixing it, Jason needs 
to sound as good as he can. So I spent a lot of time trying to make, the, the, not that the sounds weren't there, they were there and the drumming was there, but big boots to fill. So I, I took that res- responsibility. He wasn't there. So I took it, the responsibility of filling that role as much as I could to do that. And then when it's finished, the three of them came down. Again, it was a Friday and they all sat here watching it and listening to it while I sat at the back <laughs> rocking. Oh, it, it was about the most stressful day of my life, I think. It was. Like, I didn't like it, but I like it. So I got away with it anyway. You and did they listen with... all the way through before you got any feedback? Yeah. Oh, God, that's a long time to sit. Yeah, rocking. Yeah, it was intense. And, uh, yeah, it was, I mean, when you get to work on Kashmir and things, those songs that you grew up with and Stairway to Heaven, I remember texting my wife and go, Jimmy Page has just okayed my Stairway to Heaven mix. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. And she said, pick up some eggs and milk on your way home. (laughs) Yeah, all right, get home. (laughs) So, yeah, that was, we we did all that. We mixed it all in here. And then Caesar, this is when Caesar started working for me. He was the intern then. And his job would be at night doing stems of the, I'd probably doing two or two tracks a day to three tracks a day because it had to be done really fast right it was like three weeks or something crazy crazy you think why have you waited this long and now i've got a ridiculous amount of time to do it so i had to crack a crack a hell of a pace so i'd work from 12 till about 12 1 in the morning caesar would stem all the tracks that i'd done and i had john catlin working with me he'd be doing the prep work next door and then we'd have the stem so we could do the 5.1, which we did in the overdub booth as it was then, which is now Caesar's palace, Caesar's <laughs> studio. And so I'd be starting, John would be starting the 5.1 mixes as I was still doing the, the stereo mixes. And then we'd come together and did the 5.1s. Right. So we had to, we managed to get it done on time. I think we were two days early. Wow. So, and yeah. it sounds amazing. It's it's Thank great. You. And I also, did you, now did you mix, because there's on the DVD, there's also the kind of tech run through show as well. Did you mix that one or did they just leave oh, the, okay. yeah, okay. Cause I do want to say though, that those guys, I would never have been able to do it if they hadn't done all that work. Right. Well. And I don't know for sure who did all of that prep work, but I do, I want to mention Roy, because unfortunately he died earlier this year. So, oh. but beautiful guy was Robert's front of house guy forever. And he had the gig to do the live sound at that concert and realized like, no, I'll just take care of Robert's vocal. And he brought in Mick from Metallica's camp to do the wow. band. Ah. And so Roy Williams just, I mean, one of the most generous guys I've ever met. And he lived, you know, 10 minutes from me. So. Well, whoever, if he was involved in it. Thank-